Okay, there is some big news. Big negative news. I thought it should be in the newspaper. I should, thought it should be on the television channels, on the radio. And this big news is about finance.yahoo.com. And it is a very sad event because it is no longer possible, it seems, to, at least for free, download and modify URLs in order to get stock price and financial data from finance.yahoo.com. Oh. Now, I think when you're downloading data, modifying URLs, some, some things that don't look so interesting to people, but I'm not giving up on this one. I am continuing to explain this, even if nobody at all watches. Because there are some things in financial models, in financial analysis, all sorts of things, where you want some data on things that are volatile, on data on things that change, and stock price changes every minute, every day. Other financial information like uh, uh, coverage ratios and debt to EBITDA, EV to EBITDA, PE ratio, that changes. And here are the websites that I think are good, and finance.yahoo would have been on the top of the list. And then there are interest rates that change every day and exchange rates that change every day, and that's what you get kind of futures and options prices on. And it's nice to have historic data. And then there are commodity prices, and in addition to commodity prices, you know, for, for uh, oil and, and, and natural gas and things like that, they're, they're kind of electricity prices. So these are the websites that I think are wonderful, except finance.yahoo, this is so sad. And there's something called API, which I had to look up on the internet, I still don't really know what it means. Application program interface, some kind of thing where they change something on it. So, in this video, I'm going to show you as an introduction uh, uh, why finance.yahoo was kind of a nice thing. And then I'm going to uh, uh, talk about alternatives. We can use Google Finance, but that has some real problems. And we can also use Whoops, I meant to go to this one. We can also use the this uh, St. Louis Fred database because this St. Louis Fred database has a whole bunch of indices that they collect actually every day. It's not as good, really, as finance stuff. Yeah, but it's okay. Okay, so we, we have to kind of come up with some not-so-good replacements and some alternatives and discuss uh, these things. So... It's going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, gonna, I'm going to make a couple of videos showing you what the problem with finance.yahoo is and how to kind of test websites to see if they'll really work with this workbooks.open method, which I continue to think is the, uh, I really want to do. I'm going to show you why finance.yahoo was really so good, I thought. For especially for teaching and understanding financial problems and things like that. Um, I'm going to show you how to replace it with Google Finance, but not with kind of the standard Google Finance. I think I found some cool, some, 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 something to do. Maybe you think, ah, oh, I shouldn't say cool or anything, because then people say, that's not cool, that just is stupid. And then we'll show you how to get all of these indices from different countries, and which were on a lot of them. I don't know if all of them were on uh, finance.yahoo. Now, when you compare indices from different countries, I think they're going to be in a different exchange rate. Well, we'll look at least. And then we better adjust them for the exchange rate. And then there are also different countries which are not nearly as good, this kind of annual data. And then they have all these U.S. indices that I already showed you. I'm going to talk about how to download things from there. First, let me go. Now, if you go, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to leave that. You notice I have some 
If you go to the Google Drive, and then you go to chapter number one, and then you go to stock prices, I think <coughs> I'm going to name this an introductory video, and I'm just going to leave it. I collected all these stock prices using this finance.yahoo.com. And uh, let's, I'm going to put, uh, I get this one that says, retrieve stock prices general. This is an ancient kind of thing, so I put these little, uh, what, what, what do you call these, user forms in the thing, okay, and then I put a old table of contents, but the best thing you could do is you put, could put a, sin, a, a, a stop sim, sim, symbol, and you can put a really early start year, so you kind of make sure you get the most historic data, you put the end year, that's just today, and then you can put a period, like a week or a month and everything else, and then you press this get data, and you go. It it can work with workbooks.open or a couple of different ways. And then I just make a loop, and here are kind of all some of the stocks I would get, and it would just go around the stocks and put them in different uh, 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 files. Now look at this one. This adjusted close versus this close. That's a really big deal. Here's Apple. You know, this is just the raw closing price. This adjusted closing price, it's the same as the end, but it goes backwards and adjusts for for uh, uh, stock splits, and they probably had a stock split somewhere around here. Let's just graph the uh, uh, basic one. I'm not sure where they might have had a stock split. Okay, and they might they they recently had some dividends. This clearly was a stock split, okay? When they had that stock split, we'd have to, if we were comparing the history to the, to the current one, we'd have to adjust that, okay? So we got to be very careful with, with, with that. And the nice thing about this adjusted close is Yahoo did this for you, all right? <sighs> and... So we'll do some comparison of Google and Yahoo for these uh, uh, sorts of things. Now, the nice thing I really liked about this is, I put all these little graphs here, is I could, the kind of, uh, the first thing I used to do is always get the, the S&P 500. It goes all the way back to 1950. Now, this, these, uh, uh, um, indices from the Fred database, not the S&P 500, but other ones go back to the 70s. So that's pretty good, because you can compare, you can, I always say, what happened in 1986? It was black something, and a lot of people end up saying Black Friday. Well, that's not correct, because that's this shopping day, <laughs> where people spend a bunch of money on silly things because of all their uh, you know, whatever. And I s always say, well, oh, that looks like a tiny little thing compared to what happened here. And then I say, well, what happened really here? Now this one, before we say it's so small, if you would go back to, uh, uh, you know, way back here, and I should have um, uh, done this, and when we do this again, I'll do this with years instead of... Uh, Okay, I don't want to go. What did I do? Months? Uh, um, let's go back to, yeah, let's go back maybe a, a little bit for, how about to this one? And then you can do this. Now, if you look at that, that decline that happened on a single day was enormous. The kind of really interesting thing is how it came back up. I think you can get so much history. I hope that you're seeing what I'm talking about you can get so much history the 70s really stunk and then we had this extreme stock market increase which also by the way some people can look at the stock market as just if the economy grows different than the stock price it's just a big transfer of wealth machine so this is when the the, the dispersion in uh, in income got so so big in the 80s you could just see it with a stock price so many lessons from looking at the history. Now, if you go to the 
end, okay, then this, I said, well, this looks so small compared to this. This didn't happen in one day, but the dramatic effect, and you say, oh, that's the dot-com bubble. And it's a lot more than that, because it's a lot more interesting than that. It's a lot more interesting for banking and for a, a financial analysis in general, because my story about that is not dot-com. Now, what we're going to add to there, and this is the really unfortunate part about Google, they only start their stock prices in 2000, so you can't get, get a good picture, really, of, uh, of this event. And then let's find a couple of telecom companies because I'll I'll take a, should I take a British Telecom just a minute? Do I have another one? Uh, do I have Sprint or somebody like like that? Uh, this is uh, Cincinnati Bell or somebody like that. And here's what happened. Look, this blue line now looks like a calm blue line, and then you had these enormous kind of uh, spikes. And uh, this is McDonald's and some utility companies and a lot of solar companies and all of this. Notice how this time it just started in 1980 because that's how far back it went. Then we have a Vodafone and a British Tel... Uh, here's Sprint. Is that Sprint? Yes. And the same kind of thing happened. Now, this really stinks what's happening recently. But they had this enormous spike. And here's the story of the spike. If you, you have to remember what happened in the year 2000. So in my opinion, this, this and 28% and, and of, I'm not going to open another kind of uh, uh, file, but 28% of, of uh, telecom companies went bankrupt in two years. These were all, everybody was wanting to be in the telecom business. If you had a pipeline, you put, put fiber optic in your pipeline and said, I'm in the telecom business because the internet was supposed to be growing and it was supposed to be growing by something like 20% per year, which was just unbelievable if you compound that. You can't, nothing can grow like that for more than a, uh, well, okay, uh, ten, 10 years. It was crazy. And they had these extremely high PE ratios and everybody invested. And when there was over-invested, investment, even with the internet increase, there was an enormous price crash. Let's look at uh, British Telecom. And that's the sad part now. They've done well, I guess. They come down a little bit. This is the sad part. You can't kind of explain these stories about uh, about what, what, what happened to some companies. And then you can look at the betas and uh, uh, graph all this stuff and see if it's a normal distribution and this is the change in the price of course not the absolute price and then we can look at some um, what happened really let's go back and you just go back to the uh, uh, the, the stock market index and then let's compare it with uh, we don't have to look at oh, here's Apple that's not very just goes up and down, and what's happening here? You can kind of get these wonderful histories. So, so Google will start here. Now, that's not really so bad for for companies like that because you can kind of get this. This is J.P. Morgan, and then we can see well what happened during the financial crisis. How much more did it go down and then up? What was the beta? Right during the time that you care about the beta more. Now, this is a beta of 1.47, and look how it's gone up. But let's see if we can find some other kind of companies that uh, had some extreme things. And and I, I, I can't right now, but I can... Oh, let's look at AES. They, they kind of had these extreme price spikes around this. They're almost like the telecom craze. Everybody went crazy about merchant power, and then, and then there was an overbuild, a typical, such a typical story. They claimed that they were going to get really high returns. The AES Drax fell apart, Enron fell apart, and, and all of this. Um, and let's maybe just look at first solar, because I love to kind of look at them and criticize things a little bit them. And now that one will be able to do with Google Finance, although if there was a dividend, we couldn't. Then there was this craze that said, oh, 
you're going to grow, and it's really about the rate of return, much, much more than the growth rate. They were getting a really high rate of return, and 2008 came, the uh, uh, in tariffs went down, then the Chinese came into the market because they were still earning a very, very good return, and then uh, it's been pretty bad since they, they didn't declare bankruptcy. Now, I also, in this file, have um, uh, stock prices just for oil companies and all of that. And the wonderful news about this stuff was that all you had to do was clear the sheets and go and get the data, which I'm going to show you how to do with some of the new tools. Now, I'm not going to ever clear these sheets again, so I think I might even delete this one. You know, that's what I should do. And I can't. I don't know if we can really get the data anymore. And here's why. Uh, this is so sad. Oh, I'm crying. Because what happened, it was towards the middle or end of May 2017. Now, everything works with uh, uh, a... a uh, uh, I'm sorry, I kind of st stutter around a little bit. But a workbook start open. This file, I still can't, one of my, the mysteries in my life, many mysteries, and I thought, well, this is just stupid. Maybe I'm just doing this wrong. You have to make this one line macro. Is it really that hard? So over here, I put URL test. I selected this, shift control F3, and we named this range. This was uh, uh, named now URL, oops, it's URL 5 and URL test. Control F3. Everything with range names is F3. I don't want URL 5 anymore. And we certainly uh, don't... Well, I guess maybe I just have it in two sheets. Okay. Now, once you have that, all, now here, here's what happens. In the old days, here, here's Yahoo. Look how much I've changed this. I was working for the Karachi Stock Exchange, but let's take something really simple. Where's just GE? Um, um, just a second. In the old days, you would put it in GE when you uh, download it. So, so just let me make sure I'm not going to mess everything up. So if I went to uh, finance.yahoo.com uh, and then I... Uh, I hope it's going to work okay. And then I go to GE. Okay. And their stock price has been doing badly lately. But, uh, and then you go down to historical data. Okay. And then, whoops. Now, when you go to historical data, you can put frequency and put these different dates in. And you right-clicked and you go to download data. And you could... Uh, 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 copy the link. And when you copied the link, okay, I'm just going to put it somewhere here. In the old days, you would get something like this, which told you when you're starting, and it kind of give, gave you this wonderful little hints of things to do. Okay? But now it gives you this longer thing. So I thought, oh, no. What am I going to do? And what does this all stuff mean? This crumb stuff? I'm sure you might know what this crumb stuff. I think you can almost ignore that. And then it has these periods, and I thought, ah, oh, we're going to have to go and adjust everything. But then, even worse. So now, if you put an equal sign here, what used to happen is that it would go and just put that with this workbook start open. So this this macro is a simple macro that's just going to go and say workbooks.open URL test. And that URL test is a range name here. And all we would have to do is click on this one. Oh, no! It says we can't even open it with this. And then I said, oh, God, what's going on? So I said, okay, well, let's just take instead of this, let's take the old method. And I think I was on the day it didn't work, because one day it worked and the next day it didn't. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's this workbook start open. And then, ah, that doesn't work either. Oh no. And 
Then I went online, and I found out that it's Yahoo that changed things. I was always worried about Yahoo going bankrupt. Now they did something worse. They just don't let you get the thing. Somebody on the internet suggested maybe they're going to try to charge money for this now. Okay? So that's the problem. Now, I'm going to finish this video up. How long am I on? I'm 20 minutes. That's enough of this. I'm going to finish this video up, and then I'm going to make a second video and talk about how we can get items from other sources, and in particular, Google Finance and the St. Louis Fed. Okay?